We get the story behind the Settlement Bros becoming the poster boys for the Kentucky Derby. We once watched Jonathan Bales's crazy Kentucky Derby appearance here on the club, and I believe it has finally been topped. We'll dig into that and also talk a little NBA playoffs here on the club. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, we got the usual crew here and bringing in Casey Settleman, uh, the, the brother of Jack, known to pop up in the comments on this show. I believe this is your first appearance on the airwaves, though, correct? It is my first time. I think I've uh, ambushed Jack's camera once or twice live, but never had my own square uh, <laughs> on, on the video feed. So I'm happy to be here. So, I mean, we just, I just want to get into this right away here. Um, I start getting messages uh, over the weekend saying, laugh my ass off, Jack. Oh my God, Jack. And, you know, I, I didn't even know what it was referencing at first. And I went into my email and I saw the New York Times Kentucky Derby thing. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, that's how I pieced it together. And then I went online. But maybe, Jack, just set the table for the people here. Why were you guys at the Kentucky Derby? And how did you guys end up on the podium? So back in January, got connected with a company called Commonwealth. And, you know, my history of owning digital horses was very prevalent on the show in the past. And they offer people the chance to own real physical horses in a fractional fashion. So I was immediately intrigued. They were like, why don't you, you know, come down to Miami, see what we're about, check it out. And we kind of took the bet on a whim like they weren't paying us to come down they were getting us the tickets but we had to kind of make that investment so we fly down there and we show up to the track on saturday at like noon and at 12 30 they're like oh our horse is about a race it's this horse no one knew how to pronounce the horse's name uh mage maj mooj didn't really care uh but he was going off at like four yeah maj he was going off at like 14 to one and there were like 30 to 50 other Commonwealth owners of the horse. So we were like, obviously we're going to put, you know, a little money down. So we put a hundred bucks down and it essentially paid for our flights and covered the day. And, and we had a great time in Miami. Then we wanted to expand on talking about like a partnership. And so Casey and I went down to Ocala, Florida a few weeks ago, which is like the home of horse racing. We went to a horse auction. We like learned how to buy horses, what to look for, all this stuff in hopes of uh, getting kind of like a snapback team horse amongst other things. And then the last part of it was going to be going to the Derby. And like three weeks before, I think they were like, yeah, we're going to have a horse running in the Kentucky Derby. So we're like, all right, we'll come to Kentucky. We'll see what it's about. And we had like they they had probably 60 people at the race. So there's four partners in Mage. Commonwealth owns 25 percent. Ramiro owns 25 percent. Gustavo owns 25 percent. And then there's like a silent partner in there as well. And so they had Commonwealth had 60 people that they had brought out to the track in different parts of suites and general admission and, and all that stuff. So we were up in the suite and uh they were like, why don't you come down to like the home stretch suites, which are like where the more fun, vibrant crowd is up top. It's like old money. It's a little less entertaining. Docs, one of the co-founders of Commonwealth, they they uh, he was a little drunk. His brother was a little drunk and brought us down to the owner's circle suite uh, by accident. So. This was probably 90 minutes before the race. Then the Commonwealth people had way too much to do. So they couldn't take us back up. So they're like, fuck it. Just stay down here oh. and like and just hang out. So they show, you know, everyone gets back from walking out the horse. We're the only ones in the suite. And Casey was like, should we like move back? Like, this is not our moment, you know, at all. Like we were definitely <laughs> the least important people that Dude. ever needed to. This is blowing my mind. I assume this was a part of your partnership. Like you guys were going to shoot a vlog and you're going to be there well, with them. You're telling me you just like snuck into this suite. 
<laughs> we, we were, all of that is true. Like it was part of the plan to shoot the vlog, you know, be with them. But actually the owner circle suite, like that was kind of a mistake. And <laughs> I'm definitely not the type to be like, fuck those other people. Like, let's just like stay here. But I was like, whatever, let's just stay here. Like, it's fine. And uh, I said to Casey, like, Mage is going off at 16 to 1. But the odds that were here in the front row filming content for them now makes his odds like 4 million to 1. Like, it's not going to happen, like, in this moment. And the vlog is coming out. I think it's going to be Thursday. And you nice. can see, like, Mage, the one word was, like, don't break poorly. That's the one knock on Mage. Like, he's got the speed, but don't break poorly. Obviously, comes out of the gate, gets squeezed. Is in 18th for probably 80% of the race. And Casey's reaction is just looking over at Docs, who's the guy I'm hugging in this video, and being like, just trying to check if he's okay. Because, you know, it's such a big buildup to this moment. And then for, for pretty much the whole race, he's in 18th. And then there's just that moment and he gets to the outside, turns the corner, Docs gets up on the thing. I was going to follow suit. I mean, it was just fucking pure mayhem from that moment on. Uh, Casey punches himself in the head. He's looking for <laughs> uh, people to hug. It's like the Tom Brady on the bench moment. Like he doesn't know what to do. Not that anyone really would ever know what to do in that moment. But I, uh, I want to ask Casey, yeah. Now watching this, you know, now iconic video back, I feel like your brother <laughs> hangs you out to dry here, man. Like you were trying to find someone to celebrate with. You have to step back <laughs> down because Jack's just fucking ignoring you. And then as you see right there, I hit a little awkward double fist pump. Uh, <laughs> just not really knowing what uh, to do because as his brother, you'd think he would come to hug me. No. But I guess it makes <laughs> I guess it makes sense that he hugged Docs. He's the one who got us. He's the one who got us there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's the largest wager by a mile that I've ever made, and so you can't really prepare yourself for how you're going to act. And then we like it. Uh, it is so obvious now that after you win, it's going to cut to the owner suite of the horse that wins. Yeah. But like, I'm not thinking about the fact that like. We're going to be all over TV, like, if he wins. <laughs> oh, this is about as raw emotion as, as you can get. Just absolutely incredible. And then yeah, my favorite part is you, like, go back down and you're still looking for someone to, like, celebrate. <laughs> just, that's where he hits the double fist bump. <laughs> 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 so did you guys both have the same bet placed? What did you bet? 2,000 yeah. at 16 to 1? So, yeah, yeah, so we went into the day with, with 4,000. The The goal of the content for the day, because we really, like, you can't hope that Mage wins the race for the content. So we were betting, like, 200 bucks a race throughout the day, uh, and we were just going to take all that and put it on Mage. We bet five races. We lost all five. So we're down, <laughs> you know, from four to three. And uh, we were like, are we doing this? Like, like, I feel like we have to. So we each put a thousand on mage and then we bet like the place show for 500 each, which paid out like another few thousand dollars. Um, I, I mean, Casey says he was thinking about the money. I can genuinely say like the money was such an afterthought at that moment. You were moment. thinking about the content. You were thinking about yeah, the content. Yeah. I was thinking about the, the content, the moment. Trust me, the second everything cooled down, I was like, holy shit. Get the get this, you know, the tickets into my wallet, like inside my wallet, you know, zip the pocket, everything. Um, and and it was it was definitely cool to cash those tickets. They had to bring cash out of the back. It took like 20 minutes to bring all the cash. Um, and yeah, it was and then it didn't stop for like pretty much five hours because you win the race. You that moment you see celebrating. I'd say we celebrated for like 30 seconds more. And then like uh, the track officials were like, all right, let's go, go to the winner's circle. You cross the track, you do this trophy ceremony. There's interviews going on. Then you go to the press conference. Then there's like this private exclusive, almost champagne room in the horse museum for like the governor gave a speech and the, you know, the track guy, I don't even know who the fuck was speaking at that point. And then we just <laughs> went straight, we cashed our tickets and then we went to, um, 
to Jeff Ruby Steakhouse and just like ate and drank till one in the morning. And uh, we're, I would say, at least for me, I am, uh, I'm still riding that high because it was, it was fucking insane. Absolutely a wild. And it is so funny to juxtapose this with, you know, Clay reference in the tweet promoting the show, the whole stable boy thing, like our whole foray. Yeah dead racing and remember when we were doing the calls with what what was his name Rufy or whoever that dookie <laughs> whatever that guy's name was and uh little did you know jack you just needed a physical horse that was your cash cow not one of these digital ones yeah i wish i had known that earlier i would have saved all that money bet it on mage but the best part about the whole thing is uh so well first of all i don't need to call out rovell i just need to clarify for Please those do. who saw the rovell no, tweet it's it's a it's a call out. He just well, came out immediately trying to trying to shit on everyone. <laughs> Ravel, you know, he, he likes to polarize, but he tweeted after the race like mage shareholders, owners will get a hundred bucks for every 50 they put in. For every share they had, they'll return kind of 2x their investment. That's just off of the purse winnings. So the owners get the value of the horse, but plus purse winning. So Derby, I think, is $3 million. They get 60%. So divvy it all up across all the parties, and you about double your money. It's not a 16x, obviously. But the value of Mage now is anywhere from like a 35 to a 90x. And that's still like a major TBD because there's a really good chance they run him in the Derby. If he wins the Derby, they would obviously run him at Belmont. If he wins the triple crap, like who the fuck knows? Uh, and even if he doesn't, if he runs well, he just studs out and, and he'll be worth a shit ton of money. So, uh, yes, people who invested. I mean, there were people who had twenty five hundred bucks in, you know, more than twenty five hundred in ownership of Mage. And uh, they're going to yeah, they could be worth a quarter million dollars in, in a month. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool experience. That's not bad at all. No, it's, so, a, it's a decent return. So what's the next? Is it the Preakness? Is that the next one? Yeah, so Preakness is in two weeks. It's in Baltimore. Like Casey and oh, I went boy. growing up. So we're, we already have like big plans for that. And then I'm actually or we're actually doing like uh, five baseball games in five days, like AL Central Tour, which now the middle of it is uh, is during Belmont. So I'm already looking at like what a – chartering a plane so i can leave the white Sox game at 2 30 to get to to get to belmont looks but we don't want to look ahead but what what they told us was they expect depending on if forte runs because he got scratched in the derby if he doesn't run they think he could be anywhere from like three to one all the way down to almost even money in the race smaller field kind of fits his running style so who knows just enjoying the ride i think you done belmont before I actually haven't been to Belmont. We've been to Preakness like a dozen times, but never to Belmont. I was physically guess- present for the last Triple Crown winner, but not so much really? otherwise. But yeah, I was there in person. <laughs> <laughs> we took a party bus over that day with a bunch of yeah. Vanderbilt. Well, there's nothing uh, else to do at these races. Like Churchill no. Downs was so nice because I've been going to Preakness for, you know, since I was born. It's such a shithole. Churchill Downs is so nice, but. There's still nothing to do. Like it is literally food, drink, bet on horses. Like that that is the only it's not like a football or basketball arena. They got entertainment or it's just I mean, on the infield they do if you go to some of these places. But yeah, it's it's a degenerate it really is a degenerate stream. Like you just you just bet on random numbers and and root for these animals. It's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a prediction. Um you guys had pretty, I would say, just uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't know what word I'm looking for, like average or normal outfits. I feel like you guys have a heat check moment at the Preakness. Like, I feel like you guys are going to be busting out the big hats oh, this time after the 16 to one. This feels tame in comparison to what's coming. This was Casey actually bought that. I actually gave Casey shit because he bought that suit on the company card. You know, he said it was a content plan. <laughs> I said, I, I said that, hey, Every adult male should own a fucking suit. Like, I don't, you know, you don't put your underwear on the company card. So you shouldn't put a suit on the company card. He put it on and now it's worth it. Now the next go around, because I had this suit in my closet, 
I mean, if we're, if we're going to get fan, now I also, I got to wear the, the cool shoes now. I was about to say, you got lucky sneakers now. That was my next, I, I was waiting my moment to call that out. You got the lucky sneakers now. <laughs> this I is mean, the, this is the peak though. This is the top. <laughs> so did you, did you get tagged in this case here? You just randomly saw yourself on best ball Twitter. No, one of my friends who recently has gotten big into like his dynasty league, I guess, followed this guy and he sent it to me. And he was like, was just scrolling Twitter and saw this. It's hilarious. So, I mean, Jack, this is a company expense. I mean, this suit has literally gone viral, you know, in the best ball community. I mean, that you got to write that off. Oh, our accountant has no problem with the expense. I had the problem <laughs> with him thinking that he could he could spend money on the company card for a suit. It's a good suit, though. It's a good suit. I'm not going to lie. Uh, okay. And well, now it's a question of do we, you know, do we rock the same stuff or do you kind of up it for, for the race? Um, we'll, we'll have to see. There has to be like a long story of like superstitious stuff in horse racing, right? What is, do people normally wear the same suit if their horse wins? Is that what they do? I don't, I don't know. The only thing we were told was you can't wear green like that apparently is a superstition in, I don't even know if it's horse racing or just the Derby or something, but like, you're not supposed to wear green. So no green for us. Uh, but Docs was like, on Friday night, we were talking about, you know, what's he going to wear? He's like, well, when Mage won, I was wearing this, the first race. But, like, they want me to wear this because, you know, his silks were going to be pink. Um, I'm not no, a superstitious he, guy, but, yeah. He wore green to Mage's first right. win. And so he was going to do, like, oh. superstitious wear it again. But then there's a whole thing at the Derby where you can't wear green for whatever reason, so. The superstitions, you know, counteract each other. What a Casey, what are you what are you doing with your winnings? I assume you're maxing Best Ball Mania four. Uh, you're firing at the NBA playoffs, or, or is the money all spent? On suits. So the I haven't spent the money. Uh, my parents made sure to let me know to save it right off the bat. Um, <laughs> How the old are only... you, Casey? <laughs> Twenty three. Okay, fair, fair assumption by your parents. But they, but they know I am a degenerate at heart. But yes, this, I mean, I was always going to max enter, but this now gives <laughs> me uh, some comfortability around it. Um, <laughs> and then I kind of want to, oh, well, Jack's engagement party is this weekend. And Ooh. I found out yesterday that he is wearing a suit to that. And I don't have to because I'm not the groom. <laughs> But it's way more fancy than I originally thought the party was, so I may have to get an outfit for that. Wow. Look at this they guy. Just wait, party. Suits every other weekend. <laughs> Chase, you got to tell them uh, how you finished up $1,000 more than me for the oh, weekend. Oh, true. So that white hat that I was wearing all day, we – so after the press conference, they take you into like a champagne room where you do like a toast and then they do like a secondary trophy honor. And some random guy comes up to me and – He's like, he's like, can I buy that hat off of you? And I was like, and I just won my largest bet ever. Yeah. He's like, I'll I'll take it, I'll take it for 500. And usually any hat, I would just give it for 500. Yeah. But for once in my entire life, I was like, I actually kind of want to keep this. Yeah. In the sentimental luck whole thing that I kind of want to wear it at uh, Preakness. So I was like thousand to his 500, <laughs> meaning he like snap calls meaning like 500,000. And then he just takes out his wallet, like hands me a thousand. And at that point, I'm like, I cannot pass up a thousand dollars for the hat that I got from Commonwealth for free. So <laughs> after it, I, I made another $1,000. That's wow. a great deal. That is an incredible deal because you could probably go get another version of this hat pretty easily, oh, right? for sure. Um, I, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty confident that Commonwealth has more of those exact same hats that they can <laughs> Yeah, they're it's not really photo on sale in golden today. Style. <laughs> they're on their site like today, I'm pretty sure. Wow. That's uh Jack, were you uh did you have one too? You're like, wait, 750 right here, 750. <laughs> nah, I still I still have mine. We had different style hats that I guess the white was was more appealing. I'm I'm waiting for my uh triple crown hat and then I'll take the highest bidder potentially. What were you just getting tagged left and right on social after that? Yeah, it went most viral actually on TikTok. If you go to the really? Kentucky Derby's TikTok, um, one video of the whole thing that we're not in has like millions of views, but the, the few that we're in total, like one to two million views. Um, 
Yeah, it, it's crazy. We're like the fucking poster boys for for winning the Kentucky Derby. That's insane. Uh, yeah, it was. But their Twitter account fun. too is like you guys for like five tweets in yeah. a row. Oh yeah. And what? Well, the, what did the common? So, what did the Commonwealth guys think of like the ownership of like holy cow? <laughs> these guys just weaseled their way into being like now the poster yeah. boys of our company. We we were literally like, I mean, we're super close to them because we spent time down in Ocala. Like we have been getting close, but now, yeah, that one is one point two million. Fo- I think. Uh, <laughs> Someone, governor or mayor of Florida, like tweeted out a, a video of it. Um, I mean, they're excited. They they know that it's it's great for the brand. They they like grew their user base by fifty percent overnight. Um, it's it's just that's the moment. That's like that's everything you could ever want as a company. Uh, so we're happy for them. Yeah, they will keep like a Trojan horse, like a. 500k like ad deal through you guys because of the virality of the moment and then you guys compounding on that with like the sharing across like socials and stuff and y'all's following exactly. like yeah that worked out well for them in a multitude of ways but oh huge. So what? that's that's kind of the the point and and what we try to pitch is like no we're not going to them being like hey if you bring us we're gonna win the kentucky derby but that that <laughs> is the value of working with you know people who have distribution or notoriety like you know, when we're in the underdog commercials, like we get it gets X amount of extra views when they use me in the commercial or someone that other people are kind of have an audience for because then they want to share it and, and recognize it. So that, though, that's definitely our biggest, our biggest content. I mean, we're like we're trying to nail the YouTube video uh, because the content is just it's the best content we've ever filmed like it's just a live reaction to us literally winning the race um so i i'm excited our our video editor is on it now and we're kind of letting him roll with how he wants to do it and then we'll give feedback but i'm really excited for that did you guys do like a lot of um like vlog style setup before were you guys like building up to that moment well the thing is like i was trying to say is that we couldn't build up and make it all about the race really. Like we're, that was going to be the kind of the, you know, big moment, but like, if he doesn't win, you know, it's kind of anticlimactic to a degree. Right. Um, So the stuff before is like, you know, how we're betting on horses, we're chugging drinks, like Casey, however many tomatoes he got in his mouth. Like that's what number horse we're going to bet on like stupid little shit to build up to, to the big bet. Um, but now we're like, we have so much content around the race, obviously now, bef- right before, during and after that we might just like hyper condense that and just get into it. Like, that's what people want to see at the end of the day when you get, get a moment like that. Incredible. Any, any other final, uh, takeaways from you, Casey, from, uh, from the best moment of your life? <laughs> um, it's just like to me, which we've already spoken about, the fact that we weren't supposed to be there, yeah, is like the most insane part and makes it kind of like what it is. But yeah, it was, it, it I still almost don't have words for it. How much, well, it, how much do we need to bet on Mage in the Preakness? Like, what's the, what's the right amount? Yeah. And well, you, because you're not going to get near as long of odds, right? Yeah. Like, no. Three to one at like the longest. I think Three if four. Forte runs, he'll, he'll be like six to one. Like Forte will probably still be the favorite, especially after not running. Um, but if Forte doesn't run, yeah, like three to one, something like that. If it's three to one or higher, like I'll probably throw 2,000, just double the bet. Someone was like, yo, why don't you just roll it over? <laughs> like, what the fuck wrong with you? Like, I like to DJ him, but yes. I don't know how I'm doing 17 grand. He's like, if you roll it over and he wins the triple crown, you'll have like a quarter million dollars. I was like, first billionaire. Off, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't, but like, we don't have bread like that. That's it. And then the real question, though, is are you guys going to get like ownership uh, box treatment again as the official lucky charms? I know. I feel like I feel like we have to like, (laughs) but but that's obviously very selfish from my point of view of like, come on, like we were there. 
Uh, we'll yeah. definitely be taken care of. We'll be at the race and and they'll get us tickets. But what was kind of unique that's super different than than what I would imagine at Preakness is there were like, like I said, there were four partners and there were people, there were owners upstairs, there were owners in different parts of the, you know, not all four owners and their people were all in one place. At Preakness, I do believe like everyone kind of sits in the owner spot. So we would definitely get squeezed out. And given the fact that we weren't even supposed to be there the first time, uh, I doubt we, we would get that same type of access. But I don't know. We won the race for them, right? It was our screaming and, and video camera. So maybe maybe they'll bring us along for the ride. Incredible. Incredible stuff. Andy, any thoughts on horse racing, digital, or IRL? RIP digital horse racing. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty insane. Uh, it sounds super fun. Um, but I know literally nothing about horse racing. So outside of the, the videos being funny, that's about the most that I can contribute to that one. Did, Clay, did you bet mage? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I literally put a measly $25 on it beforehand because I happened to see your tweet as like, I don't know, it was like maybe 20 minutes to gates open. And I was just like, this son of a bitch is going to hit this. Like I've been seeing you tweet about this all, all day long, like 16 to one on 61 on. And I bet a couple like try boxes, a couple of his active boxes. Yeah. None of them had major. And I was just like, all right, fuck it. Literally. Like I've like talking within 10 minutes of the race starting. I just went and put like 25 on it. And then the whole race, like didn't see it happen. And like, I literally, the first thing I did was I just texted you. I just went, holy shit. <laughs> like, you would put a lot of bread on it. I was just like, God damn. I was like, yo, but it was what? fun. I got to like, you know, kind of sweat along uh, with the boys. So where, yeah. where, do, wh how many horses were ahead of it as, as far as being more favored in the Derby? Um, I would say like, so there were, there were a at couple that went off at five to one and then there were like eights to one, but then there were like a whole pack in like that 14 gotcha. to 18 to one. I would say it was probably like eighth ish favorite out of the 19, like in that kind of range or where it closed. Did you guys run into but, anyone else i mean i know uh matthew barry was there i saw uh, joey molinaro was doing content did you see uh any other people doing stuff there we saw uh ian rapaport was in the the suite next to us upstairs he had a horse actually in the race um i forget which one and then josh allen was two suites down uh -huh. uh, next to us when we got down to the owner's circle suite oscar shibwe who's like the best player on kentucky basketball he was in the sweep for a little. Um, I actually forgot to mention something that I hope we're going to highlight in the video is disengaged, I believe, was in like third and on the outside, like coming around the last turn. And that was actually the suite next to us. So you can kind of see like in, in the vlog footage, like their suite, they all like perk up. Everyone gets their phones out like they think they're going to win the race. And then it's just like the transfer of energy over to our suite. Um, and it's pretty funny, like how dead <laughs> the two next to us are while our suite is literally losing their collective minds. But they're, yeah, that they have a whole red carpet uh, at, at the Derby and, and shit. Incredible, incredible stuff. One of these days I'll have to get out there. How, like, is it from your vantage point? Was it like very clear? how you were able to see like the race unfolding or was there kind of like chaos and you're like, wait, did we win or did we not? So we were at the finish line or like probably, you know, I don't know, a quarter, not even a hundred yards from the finish line. So we had a like right as mage passed. Um, like if you skip towards the end, pretty much. Runner for top puncher. So so literally mage probably takes the lead like at, right before he would be like directly in front of us and once that happened like right there and it was like know. and then there was only you know 10 seconds left five seconds left in the race and uh i was just watching other people because at that point i had no fucking clue what was even going on i couldn't believe that he was actually gonna win the race did you guys meet the jockey yeah. Uh, yeah, he was sitting next to us at dinner. Was he chill, dude? He's like, 
four foot nine, maybe like 140 pounds. They get, so it's not get, just a cliche that they're really short. That's actually, that's actually so, true. They're so, t- and not even 140 pounds. I think they're like 110 pounds or something. They get like 10% of the winnings too. So he made, you know, a little over a quarter million that day, which nice, nice it's job not a bad for deal. him. Nah, not a bad deal. It's a small for, price and, to pay for being four foot nine, 120 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> right. Absolutely incredible stuff. Um, well, we will be very excitedly following you guys uh, at the Preakness. Hopefully you guys can uh, be live for the Triple Crown. You guys being live for the Triple Crown would just be absolutely hilarious. It, it, um, would, be, it would be scenes. The best part, though, it, the, the reason why I asked Clay if he bet it is, like, I got so many messages. Like, obviously, people tell me on, like, my underdog picks and, like, random betting shit. But in the Derby like no one has any fucking clue, right? Like you read a couple things or you see your favorite touts, like just post the pick. So I knew that like there were going to be people just because that was the only horse I was posting about. And it had like pretty good long shot odds, but not at like hundred to one that people were going to tell. And I got so many messages like, bro, like I just want $4,000. <laughs> like, like, cause on a 16 to one, you could throw a couple hundred bucks and end up with the, with a wild result. So that's the most fun. Now we'll see how many people arrive with Mage at shorter odds. That's where, you know, people are less like, you know, I don't know if Clay's throwing 25 bucks on Mage at, at three to one. It's just not like, you know, as going to score you're, quite as much. Yeah. yeah, you're 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 doing a trifecta. So Mage wins and then the other two horses don't come in after. Um, hey God, but, I just realized something. I feel like another bet I would like to place is Jack trying to tweet out some kind of sources game about mage like oh dude mage was absolutely wolfing down his oats in the stall uh you gotta you gotta really blast it in no i the funniest part is like i want to text them at, because he hasn't been announced in for the preakness like they got to do all this okay. post-op stuff so i'm like in my head, I'm like, as part of our partnership, like, I feel like I should be the one that sources that Mage is going to run in the Preakness. <laughs> like, that should be my my intel. I, I love this never-ending series of heat checks. Like, let us in the owner's box and, oh, by the way, let me be the official news reporter for Mage. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> um, Crutches does point out, meanwhile, as we've been discussing this, Andy has been battling with his camera. Yeah, it's, it's the camera's brutal. Winning. I, it's, it's, <laughs> With the way that like the sun sets right now, especially into this window, it just it's a it's a never ending battle. And I mean, the worst part is my lazy piece of shit self. That like I have a light in this closet right here through this wall like, for this exactly. Um, but, but you know, I don't have access to it right now. Actually, you know what? Let me go get it right now. Let's see if it works. Wow. Okay. Uh, while he's going to get this, let's uh, let's talk a little bit uh, NBA playoffs here because. Meanwhile, while this is all going on, your your guys is New York Knicks or Jack's mm. New York Knicks. I can never keep track of the settlements, you know, NBA allegiances. Let's go to Casey's uh, Twitter bio, the, the header photo. <laughs> yeah. What uh what what's our thought here? Miami goes up what, three one uh last night? Are we worried? Are the Knicks dead? Um I I'm actually in the the very rare minority of Knicks fans who who aren't marking this series is completely over i i actually had zero confidence and and hope for them last night and it played out almost exactly how i anticipated knicks have been an extremely streaky team all season people are obviously extremely upset because of the effort level like in 2020 the knicks were awful like they had an awful team but they got and they got smoked by atlanta but i was there at game five and like they they probably lost by double digits but they got clapped off the floor because they, they fucking tried their asses off. This team tomorrow night, if they play like that again, they'll they'll like in what is the best Knicks season in a decade, like go to Cleveland, beat Mitchell, win the series in five. Like that's all New Yorkers won is that effort. And then the leader of the team, Randall, just showed zero effort. They got out rebounded like crazy. The reason why I and and people think it's a hot take that I think the Knicks would have a better chance of coming back against Miami than Golden State does against the Lakers. Miami is not that good of a team. Like the Knicks are the more talented team. Now they're they're the worst coach team. They're the worst shooting team. There's no doubt there's plenty of flaws and deficiencies for the Knicks. But talent for talent, like the Knicks can match up with Miami 
and they've got two games at home in the series. I think the Lakers are as good, if not better, than Golden State. But are the Knicks going to try hard? I don't know. Like, in an elimination game at home, the assumption is, like, they're going to get up for that one. But after, you know, game four, where they literally could not get up for the biggest game of the season, now there's just all these question marks. Confidence is so shot. People are trying to trade Julius Randle in the offseason as if the season isn't still currently going on. So the Knicks aren't dead, in my opinion. They, they've been streaky as fuck all year long. But I, it's not like anyone has any confidence level in the Knicks. If they rolled over tomorrow, it would not shock me. And it's why uh, ticket prices have plummeted like 50% uh, <laughs> since. Do you sell yours, by the way? I still have one. I'm still going to go. Like, I'm not going to give up on this. Not yours, but your other one. Like a, yeah. No, I haven't sold the other one yet. Pr- price went down? Let me know. <laughs> oh, geez. Please try to buy the dip. Uh, you know what? I Even though I have a ton of Miami guys in the dance on underdog, I'm now rooting for the Knicks because I just need this Hemi Butler stuff to end. I mean, it's, it just, it's the most cringe thing I've ever heard. And now everyone's running with it. Hemi. I'm so <laughs> dud with Hemi. I'm dud with Hemi. Hemi. <laughs> Look how they like doesn't even help. I got to turn I on mean, now cr- turn Crutches out. says, I agree with the take, but Hemi also not having three down games in a row. I don't want to say that he had a down game last night by any stretch because he had like 28 and 11 assists, and he, he was great for what he does. But this is why I, I thought the Knicks would win the series. Jimmy Butler was never going to average 37 points a game for the series like he did last series, and he's having a – good to almost you could argue he's having a great series but it's still only 27 points per game like that's still a 10 point replacement that they've needed lowry's been great they found shooting in their reserves and the knicks have just played soft and weak honestly we're also really banged up we're tired um but we we'll see it you know what they say don't don't make us don't make them get back on a flight to Miami because because you know what happens if if you get on the flight to Miami and you win and you turn and you know I'm just you party too hard in Miami and then you're hungover on the flight home that's what happens yeah exactly <laughs> all right Andy what's your prediction for these these series give me the winner in all four all right uh, Miami in five it's over Boston in seven. Denver and seven, Lakers and six. Okay. Okay. Um, any so the Boston Philadelphia, that one seems is this is that the one that's most up in the air, or you'd say Denver, uh, Phoenix? Uh I don't know. I mean, like, I think probably what's interesting about Boston and Philly is it's one both teams have won and lost a game at home. Uh, whereas like Denver Philly, it's just like the home teams have won. And I feel like there's like a good case we made that it's just going to be the home teams win and Denver wins in seven. Um, yeah. But I, I think the Philly series really kind of comes down to Embiid in a lot of ways, like a oh, hot take comes down to the best player in the series. Um, but he like hasn't really played that well. Um, and like, Harden has really been the reason they won the two games they did. And so if he can step it up and play better, then I think that Philly is like definitely live in that series. Um, but at the same time, like Booker and KD are playing so well in that Denver Phoenix series that I think that's like after the first two games, people assumed it was over with the Chris Paul injury, but now it seems definitely not super over. Clay, do you have any difference in predictions than Andy? I, I co-sign all of that. Uh, aside from I give, I'm, I'm into Philly in seven as opposed to Boston Ooh. in seven. Mm. Um, that's a little spicy, but I don't, I don't hold strong convic- con- conviction in that statement. It's partly because I'm not a believer in the Celtics team, um, and I think we will get it in a bead game. So then it really comes down to can can Harden ball out of his mind for the rest of the series. Um, but no, agree with all of Andy's takes. Uh, thought phoenix looked you know with dead in the water and then booker is just insane man like that stat where he hit like is it like 36 out of 40 something shots of his last <laughs> that's just fucking absurd um incredible basketball yeah. like I, I i mean i will say like that's just the coolest thing is like uh 
him and this level and then Durant is just doing the most casual like 35 points a game and it feels like he's treading water um so it's just a lot of fun uh the Suns though are complicated with the whole Aiden situation and uh you know our hero Jock Landell uh in the <laughs> in the streets uh, but yeah I don't know man like uh I don't have a whole lot to add other than I, I like the Suns still um but i do think that Nuggets, mm, they're gonna take it i don't know if you actually do i think you're just holding on to your your hope that you do that they win yeah i said i think the nuggets are gonna win oh i thought you just said the suns i like the suns but i still think the nuggets are gonna win so oh uh, okay. yeah if if we get lakers nuggets in the western conference finals Tell me if I'm wrong. It feels like one where like the betting markets will still prefer the Nuggets, but the public going to be all over the Lakers. Is that well, the Lakers sound are right? already the second highest odds to win the finals. So, so the betting markets will prefer the Lakers over the Nuggets. Lakers so. price in the public. Level. No, no, no. That's because it's three one versus two two. Oh, uh, true. Oh, true, okay. Yeah. But but yeah, they'll they'll prefer them from the stance of like it's the one seed with home court against a seven seed but you know it might be pick them i i do think denver will be made a small favorite but it'll be one of those things where like if la wins one game in denver they'll move to like pretty heavy favorites uh in my opinion it's now lakers and celtics as the uh the favorite for the finals yeah. matchup wow. which is wild but uh wait did you I went to ask this did you guys get tickets in on the lakers like way back in this, I feel like I saw you tweet about this, Jack. Uh, I'm they like, were like a shirt odds. Yeah, I'm like, man, like the biggest just like, LeBron hater in the world. Right. I'm yeah, a huge well. LeBron hater. Um, and it is funny to see him be like arguably the fifth best player on the team right now after AD, <laughs> uh, Austin Reeves, and fucking Lonnie Walker. But I was I was the one saying, like, is no one gonna talk about the Lakers title odds? Like, I thought they held immense value uh way after they made the moves because it was just a, a roster construction thing yeah what are you shaking your head for uh, we were together when they made all the trades and you were like it's awful it doesn't do there anything. we go <laughs> like, wow the dm just got leaked that's why we did casey oh, I, was, I also i also told you that josh hart was the best deadline pickup which he True. was who is now colossally choking uh, who, what, are, what are your predictions casey where how do you see this unfolding um, I think the Lakers team like is coming together. I'm a big, honestly, vibes person in like a serious way that I think when, <laughs> a serious way. when like teams are really meshing together and doing it like theoretically for each other, it does mean a lot, especially these days. Um, like the eight and stuff, like I think it's bad for the Suns and Booker and Katie are just holding them together. So yeah, I think the Lakers and then. I think Philly might come out of the East, honestly, because I'm not as high on the Celtics as everyone else is as well. There as we go. There and we go. I guess the heat run doesn't have to end eventually, but in my head, I feel like it does because they're not that talented. So yeah, I'm Philly Lakers. The, uh, the I mean, Adam Silver in the league would just, just be so fully erect if they get a Lakers Celtics yeah. final, yeah. right? Oh, They're yeah. trying to Scott Foster their way into that. I so, mean, yeah. honestly, Lakers, any of those four final teams is pretty good for the league. It's it's four of the biggest markets. They don't want shockingly, Denver. Shockingly, the dream is actually uh, a Warriors comeback. Steph has the highest – he's the highest rated player in the league from a viewership perspective uh, over the last, like, five years, which genuinely shocked me. Um, he obviously benefited a lot of that from – playing against LeBron in those finals. But if if Curry gets the 3-1 comeback against LeBron, I don't know if – I assume not many of you guys watched last night. Like I watched the whole game. He, like, does not look good. Like, he looks, like, old for the – genuinely time. for the first Ever. time in his career. Like, the steroids he's been Hurts. taking are finally not, like, you know, helping him out. To the point where I had, like – I follow a lot of Cleveland people and a lot of like LeBron stands. And even they were like, we've never seen this before. Like they can definitively say he's not the best player on the team. I don't know how much that plays into it. You market the NBA finals with LeBron James. And I don't know if Boston, 
I don't know. P do people like the Tatum and Jalen Brown? Th like, that's not a real draw for, for outsiders, is it? Only people in Boston do, I think. Yeah. I don't <laughs> find them incredibly likable. I mean, Knicks, Lakers, I mean, come on. Like, that, that's the, <laughs> that's, that's the real <laughs> NBA finals stream. Uh, but that one, that one's on life support at the moment. Yeah. What a... Uh... Which uh, which player still in the playoffs uh, stands to gain the most with their top shot moment values? Would you guys say? Small worry. <laughs> Please, Nikola Jokic. When when are they announcing MVP? Who's winning MVP this year? MVP. It's over. Already it's happened. Embiid won. Embiid won. Damn, should have been Jokic yeah. for the sixth year in a row. And his Sorry. mom's not. Price might go up now that he didn't win. So. In theory, oh, yeah. in theory, if LeBron wins, wasn't that the thesis of us not selling the LeBron moment? Yeah, but I thought he was going to be the best player on the team, and now he's just, like, carried to another title. It's like Kyrie carried him, Wade carried him. Like, you know. It, Yo, my hope my guy stopped, one. like, going, like, six hours early and getting, like, three damn workouts in before a game. Like, at a certain <laughs> yeah. point, I don't know. Like, you are aging, my guy, and you drink a lot of wine. Uh, maybe he's just trying to sweat out the alcohol before every like shoot around. Like I don't know, but damn. What? Ever... Wait, Claire, you you're shaming LeBron for drinking too much too much wine these days before basketball. Speaking heard? from personal experience, it's, it does uh, harm your performance. <laughs> you think he's really? drinking a bottle of wine before the games? Not like the night before. Oh, also right. the um, the Top Shot Hot Boys, uh, the the No Dunk Screw, they're yeah. confirmed going to summer league. So. Oh, okay. uh, maybe if they would fucking stop ducking us for multiple years till we all yeah. aged out, got fucking engaged, married, had children, maybe we could have been able to go to Vegas. I don't know how realistic that's going to be now uh, in the middle of July. When is Summer League this year? It's the 7th to the 17th, July. I'm trying to figure out what my bachelor party is going to be in July. Ooh. So. That, that right in the middle that. of your bachelor party, she's a pickup <laughs> game against a bunch of podcasters. <laughs> I, here's awesome. how you make it the, the bachelor party. You call it the LeBron James challenge, and everyone has to drink a bottle of wine before the pickup game. Right. That, that's the bachelor. Clay's Clay banned from drinking before uh, basketball runs, even if he has 24 <laughs> hours notice. It has to be a 24-hour yeah. break. Yeah. Second to third weekend of July. Do uh, you guys want to wrap up by firing a few at the uh, the heat check for tonight on underdog? 8K up chop. Let's do it. Chase Is it – um? Are they doing single day tournaments again? Yeah, no, they, they've been doing it all. Uh, they got a bunch of stuff. Tip off, off the so. dunk, but you know I have to. Uh, I gravitate to this eight K winner take all super smooth oh, payout. Three structure. person draft. Wow, they got a lot of shit. All right, I'm in. Yeah. Oh my! So this is split this it's gonna be, it's gonna five be ways. Three of us. Oh, oh uh, in crutch. Oh, okay, wow. Jack did get it. <laughs> I'm in a different <laughs> one. So this you, this tournament, Jack, is winner takes all. It's uh, what? Yeah, yeah, first place gets eight grand. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, Jack! Are, are you? Do you have a? Are you a partner with Underdog? Or are you? Do I'm you a pick them partner. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, hey, you've been picking them wrong too, open. my guy. A Andy, yeah. actually, if if the company doesn't work out, we might have to hire Andy for like a draft component to our content because we're so heavy pick them. And he just, I don't know. Do you grind drafts or does your uh, yeah, artificial my, intelligence? Well, my, oh. my computer, my computer grinds drafts. Uh, but I did win another tournament last night. So you did? <laughs> you did? Yeah, it was one of the smaller ones. It was the three man weave, but but yeah, Fire. got first place in that last night. There you go. How much so was up top? There's that? nothing uh, better two grand. than winning, winning a tourney. Yeah, it was it was a funny night though because I played like so they had two main tournaments last night. Like after the first one was over, they they filled so fast that they had another, and so I max entered both of those obviously, um, which is not cheap. And I did so poorly in those that I barely made money after even winning after winning the third tournament. Yeah. Is, Casey, how uh, are our soccer pickups looking? Uh, they went one for two, so profit. There you go. All this yeah. guy Casey does is just win money. <laughs> just just wins. Um, all right, talk to me through the the landscape uh, tonight. Uh, is, is so Tatum... the biggest? Uh, yeah, yeah, you take Tatum for sure. What were you gonna say though? The biggest, I would say, like one of the bigger conversation pieces tonight is uh, DeAndre Ayton. 
he's like been losing minutes to Jock Landale and just like yeah. generally not necessarily playing super great, but he still has a really high projection on underdog. And so I would say for the most part, Jaylen. Jaylen. people have been drafting him lower than what his projection is. Um, not that and much lower just because it's a thin field, but right. And this is the same dynamic that we talked about last time where there's no ADP, right? It's just the ranks in here and they're not changing at all. Yeah. Basically like, well, so the ranks, they update their ranks throughout the day, which definitely causes like some interesting changes to like the, you know, the silent ADP that exists. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically in all of the playoff tournaments for the most part, they've been doing a couple two day playoff tournaments and those will have ADP. But anything lately that's not six players, they have not been doing an ADP for. Gotcha. Clay, what do I need to do here? Jack, but mainly Clay. Uh, I mean, you do already have Tatum and Brown, but I think Brogdon's the best upside here still, relatively speaking. Or you go down to – I mean, I don't love or- Tobias. He – Need to play well. Horford's Brown, playing. I like, yeah. Horford stacking uh, steals and blocks. Sneaky. Yeah. yeah he or had you, five blocks last game. Or you take the every man's favorite man in Jock Landale. But I don't think it's enough upside. Um, I'll go Bruce Brown, honestly, because he's got secure minutes and he does have good ancillary stats upside. So, like, he's got somewhat of a floor. He doesn't have, like, a high ceiling. But out of these guys, he's got the highest ceiling, in my opinion. All right. Let's do uh let's do one more. We'll do it. Or we can do do you want to do a do we have any that are more than three person drafts? We have the four person dunk, right? And there's yeah. the main yeah. contest. Unless that or we just do a, a puppy or you know BBM four. <laughs> I wish I had time for that, but I do not. <laughs> yeah, um same. is the Tuesday tip off the, the big one? That's the main, the main one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do one of these. I cannot participate in this because I've already max entered for the day, so I'll be, <laughs> I'll be advising on this one. You've already – oh, you put 150 of this already? Oh, where you're, you're yeah. a robot? My, well, my, yeah. my machines have. All I right. do now is I just – it's just 25 draft clips with uh, 10% randomness based on my projections and then checking exposures where, like, after my first 100 drafts today, I had 75% Aaron Gordon, and so I took him out of my player pool. Um, <laughs> together. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. So I was like, I no longer want any more Aaron Gordon. Is that where you know most people get the dopamine rush from the draft itself? You get your dopamine rush by flipping over the cards on your exposures. You're like, holy shit, seventy five percent Aaron Gordon. <laughs> Literally, me this morning in the in the hoops chat in Bad Bros in uh in the mm-hmm. Deposit Kingdom, I like did my exposure after a hundred drafts, and I was like, holy shit, guys, someone. Try to guess what my exposure is for Aaron Gordon. It is not good. Like, this is, it was this is was that mistake. with randomness set in? Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's just with these smaller player pools and stuff. There's just you know, like I have Aaron Gordon projected at like the top of kind of the next tier of players, which is after Jalen Brown, and so he just like naturally kind of you know there's like shit like seven players who i have all within three fantasy points of each other but he just kind of naturally floats to the top of that a lot and i think most people are actually more down on him Booker. than i am Booker. okay Booker. yeah I like Booker over here. okay no <laughs> what you don't like booker casey i really like him tonight okay booker is my number two projected player Tonight. Yeah. Brown or Harden? Jalen's got the better matchup. Harden has a nuclear yeah. upside. It's yeah, it's, I think it's Harden and it's not Harden for the close, upside. Actually. I actually I actually have Harden and Jamal Murray pretty significantly far ahead of Jalen Brown. Gotcha. I don't disagree, but I will say like matchup wise, Brown technically has a better matchup than even Tatum does, but you know, it kind of depends what about Tatum. Yeah. Hasn't really played out that way so far this uh this series yeah i mean true but i mean tatum hasn't shown like this he doesn't have the ceiling that he's really shown compared to 
the other guys. He had 67 fantasy points in the last game. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's a few okay. fair enough yeah jack if the knicks get bounced will you be going to any more nba games this season yeah we'll, or- we'll be at a finals game for for a content thing and then um we're going to the sixers celtics game on thursday in philly and then so, i don't i don't know i like aaron gordon i was gonna say <laughs> we know who you like andy <laughs> 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 Oh man, I don't know if we'll go to a conference finals. Who's it going to be? Miami, possibly. Um, like Brogdon. Brogdon again? Yeah, he's been searching for I a like, shot. Don't you want to go D White though for leverage? He's been his minutes have been trending. Well, turning down a little bit last game for the first time after a lot of coach speak about him. You know, being the team rides off of Derek White's turnovers. Or not to I mean, D White's a but... fucking goat. He's just been playing worse than than Brogdon and Smart too. Brogdon has a good matchup. Yep, yeah, and been seeking seeking the shot. But with those guys, you, you know, there's like a very real chance that Derek White plays 35 minutes tonight and drops 25 points and has three steals. And like, is the highest performing of all of them. I, I tried to be pretty flat on all those guys. Agreed. Um, all right. What do we? So we got Devin Booker, James Harden, Aaron Gordon, Malcolm Brogdon. It's it's a watered down version of the team we just drafted in a three man draft, is what I'm realizing. It's funny how that works. Going from a four, yeah. three man to a four man draft. Well, you got anchored on Aaron Gordon there. <laughs> well, I mean, once I heard Andy he was, you know, uh, so I, I would say the one feeling. thing here. I think Robert Williams' projection is like totally out of whack. I would not draft him. Okay. Um, but like Bruce Brown or Jock Landale or Contavious Caldwell Pope. I have a feeling that Crutches is going to take KCP and Jock Landale. And then I actually like. Andy, you're Melton, Melton tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I, like I am. Melton. Yeah, I like Melton. Melton? Here. That's, that's who I would that's take. Yeah. Based yeah, on too. my stuff, yeah. I, I, I have pretty right. high uh, Melton exposure, actually. I have like. I'm like 50% above the field on him. Beautiful. Um, all right. There you guys have it. The Settlement Bros, fresh off of the Kentucky Derby. Thank you guys for uh, telling your story. The vlog dropping soon, you said? Yeah. Case, when's it coming out? Uh, I would say 80% that it's coming out on Thursday. If it comes out tomorrow, I'd be surprised, presently surprised. All right. Is this going to be, are you dropping it or is it going to be a live premiere? I think we're just going to drop it. Just drop it. Drop it like it's hot. Looking forward to that. I'll drop a, that's on the snap, snapback YouTube, right? Yep. Sweet. I will link to that in the show notes. Clay, what do you got going on? Not too much. I got my batch coming up actually uh, pretty soon, like two weeks. Oh, so nice. Forward to that. Where are you, um, what are you going? Doing? Yeah. Uh, going to like Charleston. Yeah. Going to go nice, park dude. on a beach with, Bunch of my boys. Uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, and yeah, Jack, Casey, uh, my not financial. You're not doing a boy girl uh, parting. You're not no, doing joint. No. Not for this. No. no. Wow. It's 2023, time. Clay. Do we really need to segment by gender when we party? I mean, look, we we uh, we dipped a toe in. We did a blended <laughs> bridal shower. All right, it's very okay. 2023. No. Allie just got back from uh, her bachelorette party. She had like originally floated doing a uh, joint, and I was like. Nothing against you and your friends. You want to go sit on the beach and drink margaritas. I want to go stand at a craps table for ten hours straight. I don't think that we're going to do the same thing. <laughs> we at are our, not the at same. Our parties. Yeah. Let's just... <laughs> where Where did Allie go? She went to Tulum. Ooh, that sounds fun. Fire. Yeah, she had a great time. I think it was super fun. Look, she was going to go out just like Montauk or something, and I was like, it's going to be literally cheaper to fly to Tulum than it will be to stay at like Gurney's in Montauk and like yeah, do all of that. There you go. Uh, anything else going on uh, for you, Andy, over at Sarah Escher? No, nothing too crazy right now. You know, just max entering these uh, best these tournaments with my computers. I did a puppy draft today. Start, I'm just watching Anthony Richardson's ADP creep up every day. Uh, <laughs> I, I fully stopped doing BBM uh, for drafts until the, the schedule comes out. 
unless Travis Kelsey's mom leaves more uh, of the <laughs> schedule on Facebook. But that's hilarious. <laughs> um, what did you say? Right. I missed that. What's she that tweeted she... out that the Eagles and the Chiefs play each other week two, or, or posted on Facebook. Oh. Thought wow. you, thought you, but I, you said week. I heard 17 coming out of your mouth next. And I was like, oh, no, nah, I wish. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I'm going to go draft a puppy team right now just so I can do Travis Kelsey in the first, Devonta Smith in the second for that week two correlation. Uh, right when, when we Thanks, hop Donna. In, count it down. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I appreciate you guys uh, watching the uh, show today, hanging out in the chat. Enjoy the NBA playoffs. Keep an eye out for the epic Kentucky Derby vlog coming from the Settlement Bros. We'll see you guys next week on the club. Peace.